We're running the cover three here at Pro Football Weekly, where we bring you three under-the-radar stories from the divisional round of the NFL playoffs. The New England Patriots entered their game against the Texans as healthy as they had been all season long. Well, that didn't last. Rob Gronkowski left the game with an injury. He is reportedly out for the rest of the postseason. And Danny Wood had left as well. Those are two keys to that offense. But it was Shane Vereen who's the one that stepped up and had a huge game, scoring three total touchdowns. Stepping into Danny Woodhead's role as the pass catching back, helping block blitzers, he just was a huge difference maker for New England. Next week, as the Patriots look to return to the Super Bowl, they're going to need to count on guys like Shane Vereen to step up, especially if Danny Woodhead also can't go. And it could be Vereen and his fellow second-year running back Stephen Ridley that are the ones that lead this offense, an offense used to veterans stepping up. It could be the two young running backs that get the Patriots to New Orleans. Broncos safety Raheem Moore has been burned for the way he misplayed that deep pass to Jacoby Jones at the end of regulation. Understandably, in that coverage, you can't get beat deep like that. But I find just as much fault with Broncos head coach John Fox on the ensuing kickoff moments later. 30 seconds left, two timeouts, Peyton Manning, and you take a knee? This Ravens defense, gallant as they were, played 90 plays against the Colts six days earlier and had a lot of hands on hips in the fourth quarter in this game. You have perhaps the best quick strike quarterback of your generation, you must attack. To be fair, Manning was running out of gas in the fourth quarter and looked downright human in overtime. But you don't even give him one play in that situation? Not one of his patented 17-yard dig routes to jumpstart a late drive? It seems crazy. After all, Matt Ryan for the Falcons hardly played a perfect game, but in 31 seconds he got his team in a position to win and against the better Seahawks defense. It seems to me that John Fox's decision should make him the bigger GOAT than Moore or Manning or anyone else. Don Papers and Wade Phillips are two of the better defensive coordinators in the business but they both had days they would just as soon forget in the divisional round. It was the Colin Kaepernick show out in San Francisco, and Capers looked like he had never seen tape of the dual threat quarterback. Granted, I know it was Alex Smith they faced in week one, but you'd think that group would have been a little bit better prepared to try and keep Kaepernick in the pocket and forced to make plays with his arm. He did that, but he did plenty outside the pocket as well as the Packers showed no contain on the edges and showed very little quarterback spy action that may have helped slow down Kaepernick. In Foxborough, I don't want to give Gary Kubiak a pass because I don't think he coached a good game either, but I expected more from Wade Phillips just five weeks after the Texans looked totally ill-prepared against the Patriots in the regular season matchup. Once again, it was linebackers struggling out in space, this time against Aaron Hernandez, Shane Vereen. You saw poor tackling, which is uncharacteristic for Wade Phillips' group. It was overall not a good showing when the stakes were the highest. These coordinators did a lot of nice work to get the teams this far into the season, but it's safe to say they did not have their best efforts when it mattered most. For all the latest news and analysis, be sure to check us out at ProFootballWeekly.com.